Pokemon Adventures Gen 1 is the manga for the richest media franchise in the world and it started to be published just a year after the first game. And as you know in the main series or in the anime or in the fucking pinball game everything from the world to the Pokemon is very linear and restricted. However this manga looks at all of that and goes nah fuck it and shows us a semi realistic world where Pokemon are used to destroy cities, destroy machines, spy on people. One of the most used battle tactics in here is straight up to attack the trader. We see people getting knocked out, we see flesh wounds and on multiple occasions we see Pokemon getting straight up killed. But to be real with you, for the most part this is an extremely wholesome adventure where our boy goes through a bunch of random shit and gets more powerful and as he does that he's involved in the larger narrative which is surprisingly consistent and entertaining so story wise this is definitely the best version of Pokemon and I tell you why and how after the quirky title drop. I'm a god. Now before we really start off I feel like I should provide some context to how does the manga function and which part of it I'm reviewing. Because you see when a new generation is released and a new mainline game is out there the manga has a bit of a soft reboot if you will and we just start following completely different characters and a completely different storyline. However from what I can gather everything is like very very loosely tied together up until gen 4 because as you probably know the first gen and the second gen are had like remakes fire red, leaf green and when that happens uh, the characters that we are observing in the first generation come back in the manga for a few volumes and we catch up with them and we go on a new adventure with them. So technically just skimming through all of these covers I made the educated guess that while characters from the past generations are showing up for the most part when the new gen is released it's its own self-contained story and we get a few cameos from the characters that existed before. So I'm gonna be reviewing only the first 7 volumes which are equivalent to 90 chapters which is what most mangas have to you know bring their story to completion. And who knows maybe in the future I'm gonna make a review on the other generations or on the whole manga in general up until you know that loose thread is just severed and uh, the each generation has its own individual manga. Anyway let's talk about the art. While for the most part everything is well executed and very very functional there are some aspects that generally feel underwhelming because the magic of Pokemon or for me at least a huge part of the magic are all of the environments be that all of the mystical forests or all of the creative towns or all of the quirky roads everything that is around the characters adds so much charm to the Pokemon world in general and basically none of that is portrayed in any meaningful way here. I'm pretty sure the only thing that we give special attention to is this boat <laughs> and everything else from the big cities to the iconic towers and locations of the first generation are mostly shown in the distance or in a very very small panel and then we make a jump cut and we're inside of them all of a sudden so we don't get to sink in any of the vibe. But with that said you have to consider that the manga was released in 1997 <laughs> and the only place where the people that made the manga could take inspiration from was this shit. So because of that I can kind of look over that the most world building we get is from the map at the end of each volume which is very quirky and I really really liked it but definitely shouldn't have been the peak of the world building you know. So if we just decide to ignore that whole thing there is still this unassuming charming art style that I personally found to be a uh, very very appealing and I really really liked it but even with that it feels like the manga just has the the cartoonish quirkiness and nothing that much more because the artistic value in here isn't very high <laughs> because sometimes cool shit is happening and the manga is bringing special attention to it like for example uh, the main character uh, fucking fighting against this dude and our main character has like a water snake and the other dude has like a rock snake and they're fucking flying and battling each other it's really fucking cool but we get this panel this page from it and the most impactful panel I feel like in the whole manga honestly is this little guy here at the bottom of the page fucking cramped by everything else which is these huge fucking snake silhouettes flying in the sky and fucking fighting each other it's really cool but it would have been so much better if the manga decided to embrace the the, the absurd nature of everything but it doesn't do that we, we didn't even get like a full page until the very end of the manga and wow those pages are cool there are so many moments that feel like deserve more you know just artistic attention in general so the art is not something to write home about but oh my god the story is the story is a whole different beast i already went over how different the story feels when compared to any other pokemon story but 
I feel like you can be kind of confused there. I don't find the manga so fresh because of all of the bad shit, insane, out of pocket stuff that happened. Because that does happen, but is pretty rare. I find it fresh because the world feels so fucking functional. Like this dude using his bug type Pokemon to have like a string on his fish rod. Like Misty using her Pokemon, that's uh, the, the star one, I don't remember the name, to go up into the sky and to show a whole ass message to everybody in the country. Uh, to the, our main character character using vine whip or whatever the fuck the vines were to make a whole net so he can fill out attacks and he can uh, understand what's going on around him so many cool things are done not only in the world but in the battles too the battles feel so fucking creative we have this one dude that's equipping his pokemon and using them as armor and as weapons and he's basically fighting with them and also sometimes the trainers are not like shouting what they're gonna do or something they have like code words for stuff or just have uh, different alternative methods to tell their pokemons what to do so they can catch the other person by surprise sometimes a trainer says to its pokemon to do a certain move but it does another move because it has been trained that way and don't even get me started on how much the trainer's skill in battle matters one of the key techniques that are used all of the time in the manga is how fast you can reach at your pokemon bow and like release the pokemon and have it to attack the other guy it's like some western shit at one particular battle battle and uh, sometimes the pokemon are charging an attack inside the pokeball and then you throw that shit and the pokemon attacks right away there's so many different and smart uses for pokemon that are seen exclusively in this manga and those that i've just fucking spilled out onto you are some only some of the many creative ones out there now with that said there are definitely some fights where a considerable amount of bullshit ensues because especially at the start uh it feels like Pokemon and Pokemon trainers are winning by pure fucking convenience, dude. They just pull some shit out of their ass and all of a sudden they have won this fucking battle. It's stuff just feels very very awkward especially when it comes to the battles at the start but as the manga progresses forward it leaves that behind in favor of the smart strategies that we observe at the end and it's so fucking cool and while we're talking about story progression how about that pacing huh because <laughs> because man uh the start is great the start feels like a cool adventure we're just starting off and after a little bit red the main character after he just starts doing random shit for like a few volumes and then he uh, has like a cool ending to his arc and then we start following another main character now that main character is involved in the plot and uh the red which is the first main character he is very very present in that story as well so for like, I don't know, most of the manga, for most of the manga there is this larger plot that we're observing and it's pretty fucking cool, but there, there, are, there are parts of the story that feel like semi-pointless, or that's at least how they would have felt if it wasn't apparent that the characters are always, always growing, even in those parts of the story. Because even if some random villain of the day type shit happens, there is always a lesson that is supposedly learned by our main characters and by that i don't mean only red but i mean blue and i mean yellow too all of them supposedly change by the end of the chapter and they take a lesson with them but technically we know that's there just for a narrative reason so we can have a nice end to the chapter and that's what you would think but the manga makes it very very obvious how much all of the main characters change it's amazing how these cartoonish dudes can have so many reasonable thoughts and can learn from their experiences i was genuinely taken by a surprise how these dudes are so fucking dynamic apart from green she just kind of stays the same throughout the whole manga doesn't really you know learn anything but at the same time to compensate for that she has a very very strong character that we explore so while she is not technically changing in any meaningful way there is uh, some complexity to her by default and that feels pretty fucking cool too another aspect of the characters that i'm not really sure how should i feel about because i'm not sure are they really characters are the pokemons themselves because technically very very technically they have emotions and they're slightly complex sometimes but it feels like the, what the pokemons are about kind of just bends to whatever the narrative needs at that current point which is not really enough to establish them as solid characters and to add to that some party members of the six pokemons that the main characters can have uh 
just don't feel that important when compared to others. It feels like some uh, Pokemon get like a few chapters to really flesh them out and to have their own little journey and other Pokemons don't get even one chapter. So it feels a little awkward that not every Pokemon is super important and not every Pokemon has its own mini arc, which I personally think would have been way, way more satisfying, but it's not really the case. And last but not least, the bad guys, which I find to be so incredibly interesting and entertaining, and not because they're super complex or anything, but because they're so truly evil. Dude, these guys are such fucking assholes that it's so, so weird when compared to the goofy cartoony nature of the rest of the manga and that they're these in the center of everything huge hard hypocrites that feel like they're taken straight out from Jagan or something or some like hardcore seinen manga that are fucking fighting and killing kids and shit. It's so fucking captivating to see how do these dudes can become even more evil which they do and it's 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 great. <laughs> I feel like objectively looking at the manga this is by far one of the most interesting things that has been done in here simply because there's such a huge contrast to you know the rest of the manga. And all of that brings me to the question that I have asked myself from when I started reading the manga to I don't know until a couple of minutes ago. Uh, is the manga enjoyable if you have no idea what Pokemon even is? Because I feel like everybody that has ever engaged with the anime or the games or anything else related to Pokemon knows how much to flex their suspension of disbelief and to, you know, just repel the dumb shit that just comes with the Pokemon world. But I feel like a normal average human being that has maybe, maybe loosely, loosely heard of Pokemon as only a name and has no idea what it's about, I feel like that person will just look at this and not draw the line between oh this is just average Pokemon silliness it's just goofy like that and oh okay this actually doesn't make sense I feel like if you have no idea what Pokemon is none of this shit makes sense so hey if you have never heard of this shit I'm so sorry for you man but for everybody else and I'm pretty sure that's like a huge huge amount of the human population that knows how generally Pokemon functions you will be good because god damn it it's so fun to see these Pokemon that you know and love to do all of these different and creative stuff and even with that in mind this leaves some things to be desired like for example there is just magic in this world there are these magical artifacts that we never explain how they work or why they work and they are not part of canon pokemon so yeah, yeah, there is just magic sometimes and not again the average Pokemon magic, a whole new type of magic and we don't know what it's about. So that doesn't really make sense. And when you combine that with the pacing and some other issues that I talked about earlier, I don't know. I feel like my subjective score on this shit would be like a strong, strong 7. Very, very enjoyable, but still kind of goofy, you know? Hey baby, it's me, I'm here and I'm doing, guess what, a fucking manga club. That's right, next three videos that I'll be releasing, you know what they are. And if any of these mangas look semi-interesting, then hey man, maybe read ahead of time, maybe anticipate the review, that would be pretty fucking nice. Hey there fellas, sorry for the late video, I just had to do some traveling and fuck up my schedule. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that I'm reviewing 7 Deadly Sins and I'm announcing it early so you can read ahead of time because it's quite fucking long. Uh, that's it, back to the video. Also, social media, I post every other day manga panels, uh, fucking hyping up the next manga. It will be pretty, pretty nice if you uh, follow that shit too. And that's about it. Uh, th thanks for watching. Yeah, haven't said that in a while. Uh, and fucking, I don't know, that's it.